Hello and welcome. It's me, Architect Piyush Pan. So here I am again with another video on Photoshop tips and tricks, which can make the rendering part super easy. Previously, I had done a couple of videos on Photoshop in which I have explained full planned rendering in detail and how we can remove the pixelation of a CAD exported PDF in Photoshop. You will find their links in the description. So to extend that, in this video, I am going to explain in detail how we can convert any random image from internet or photograph by self or image from any other medium in scale texture in Photoshop which we could use in our plans, elevations, landscapes and other presentation drawings and renderings. So let's jump into the video and see how we can do it. So uh, here in front of you is a sample plan from one of my previous projects, credits to Sukaman Architects. You will find the link in the description. With the help of this plan, I will explain you how I can use any random image and convert it into scale Photoshop texture with super ease. Let's understand with very basic example of flooring pattern in a plan. Let's do a sample rendering of kitchen floor. So first step is very common. We need to create a separate layer for kitchen floor. For that, we need to mark the kitchen floor area. To do that, most easy way is of course using the magic wand tool and making sure that we have selected plan layer first. Just click inside the kitchen floor area and it will snap automatically. But the text is also coming in between. It will not give us clear floor area and you don't want to waste your time in deselecting the text. So what I do in this case is switch to polygonal lasso tool. Here in this plan, as it has many angular lines, lasso tool is perfect. Otherwise, rectangular marker tool must have been a better choice in case where the plan is more linear. I will place my lasso tool on all corner of the defined kitchen floor to create a boundary. Now our kitchen floor boundary is completed Activate Rectangular Marku Tool command, then only you will get option to create a separate layer for kitchen floor. Create new layer, name it kitchen floor. Now right click again and select fill option this time from the list to render the floor area. The most common way we do is by using colors for rendering. Select the desired color and click OK and your kitchen floor is rendered. But this is very basic way of rendering. What if I want some realistic tile or stone flooring material in my kitchen floor plan to make it more presentable? Here is when creating a texture in Photoshop comes in very handy. But first let me show you the regular way by which we create texture flooring and what are the problems we face in doing that. Then I will explain you the method I use to do the same thing in super easy and controlled way. Okay, so let's download any random kitchen floor tile texture. I recommend you go for seamless texture because it gives smooth finish when scaled or used multiple times in floor plan. I'm using this texture. Let's save it and open it in Photoshop. Now our texture is open in Photoshop. Double click on the lock background in layer panel and click OK to convert it into layer so that we can drag the image in our sample floor plan. Now our kitchen floor tile image is inside the plan, but it's not scaled and also not aligned. We will get into that as well. Before that, let's rename the image as kitchen tile. Now select the image and use transform tool. The shortcut to which is that control plus T to rotate the image and align it with the kitchen floor. Once the image is aligned, it is time to scale it. To know scaling in Photoshop in detail, watch my other detailed video from the link in description. We can use any reference dimension from the plan to scale our floor tile. For example, in this plan, W4 window is two feet wide and 
W3 window is 3 feet wide. So let's say kitchen tiles are 2 feet by 2 feet. So I will scale down the image so that one tile width becomes 2 feet by taking W4 as reference. Okay, now the image is all set to be placed on floor. So I will copy the image multiple times till I cover the whole kitchen floor. Now select multiple copies, right click and merge them all to make one layer. Now use lasso tool after selecting the tile layer and make boundary for kitchen floor. Right click and use layer wire cut option to remove extra portion of the layer. And now rename our final floor layer. I would like to change the opacity a little as the texture is coming out too dark. So this was the regular method of creating floor texture or any texture in Photoshop. You saw how lengthy was the process, scaling, arranging, aligning, doing multiple copies, etc. There is another method in which we can create the same image we used for kitchen floor just now into a custom pattern and can use it just like we fill the color in Photoshop. So let's open the sample plan again and this time let's take elliptical Marku tool. Right click to open the Marku tool list and select elliptical tool. Now create an ellipse or a circle around the kitchen floor. Why I am doing this you will get to know. Follow the same process as before to create a new layer. Right click, new layer, name the layer and click OK. Now again right click to fill the layer with color same as before. Now select the kitchen floor layer and bring it below the plan layer by using Ctrl plus Shift plus bracket or you can drag down from the layer panel as well. Now from this step things change. Go to kitchen floor layer and double click it. In the layer style window dialog check the box of pattern overlay and select the pattern overlay option to get into the menu for pattern overlay. You can see there is blend mode, pattern list, opacity and other options which we can use to refine our pattern. So when you open pattern list you will find few default patterns already there. But we don't want these patterns, we want the tile pattern which we downloaded for kitchen earlier. So how to bring that pattern here in this list? Let's leave the plan here and go back to the downloaded tile pattern image. Now this is our texture or tile pattern which we want in our kitchen floor. To convert this image into pattern in Photoshop, just go to edit menu and select define pattern option. Assign the pattern name and click OK. Now go back to our sample plan and open the pattern overlay option again in the kitchen floor layer. Open the pattern list and you will see that our kitchen tile pattern is now showing in the list. Select it to apply and you will see the texture is filled in the whole layer. Now comes the scaling part. There is an option given for scaling the pattern. Just keep changing numbers till you get your desired scale. I will scale it with reference to W4 and edit numbers to bring it closer to that size. Once you are satisfied with the scale of the texture, move ahead and click OK to finish. Now our scaling is done. Now comes the part of aligning the texture. As in this plan, lines are in various angles, so we have to align all texture. But in a linear plan, things become easier. 
Select the floor layer, use transform tool to rotate the texture and align with the kitchen wall angle. That's why I use the elliptical or circle tool to create a circular layer so that while rotating and aligning the texture, we get the full room covered. But when you do that, you will see that the texture is not rotating. It is fixed to its position. So how to resolve it? Nothing to worry, just get out of transform tool and go to the kitchen floor layer. Right click and either rasterize the layer or convert it into smart object, both will work. After doing that, now again use transform tool and rotate the texture to align it. This time the whole texture is rotated. Remember, this thing is only required when your walls are at certain angle like this one. But if wall in your plan are at 90 degrees, you don't need to do that last step in the process for alignment. That will save more time. Now align your texture as per the floor angle. After doing that, use the polygonal lasso tool to create the kitchen floor boundary. After that, right click and do layer wire copy as it's a smart object so layer wire cut option is not available. Now rename the layer and adjust opacity and our texture is ready. Let's render toilet floors to make it more clear using the same method. So I have shown you all three methods I know and personally I like the last one because that gives me flexibility when I want to check multiple texture in any area of my plan, elevation, sections or any other presentation drawing. I can easily create any image into pattern and use it multiple times in my rendering with just few clicks. 